Bergeron's Briefs, a uh, legal series devoted to a set of issues that we feel are of interest to uh, older citizens. Uh, as, I, as I had mentioned at the first show that we did last, last time, um, we're trying to focus our first few shows on Alzheimer's disease, on prevention, on re and on issues relevant to Alzheimer's disease. Uh, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell, and I focus on elder law. With me is Tammy Pazaricki. Who joined me in the uh, last show? Uh, Tammy uh, runs Pleasantries, an adult day uh, facility, day health facility in uh, in Marlboro. Um, Tammy, thank you very much for coming on to the show again. You're welcome. Thank you for having uh, me. You were so delightful last time. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. Um, so you, you remember from last time we were talking about a lot of the different aspects of Alzheimer's, and and one of the things that and, and, and that I wanted to focus on in the first part of the show today uh, was on. Resources. We talked about resources. You recall we had um, um, a person in from Bay Path Elder Services. And yes. They provide a very, very important uh, role, especially for people who are in the later stages of Alzheimer's. Um, but something that I think folks are not aware of and that I wanted to hear more about was the Alzheimer's Association. And I know you're involved in that. Once again, can you just give us a sense of, so who, who, are, who are you again? Okay, so I... I started a business, uh, Pleasantries Adult yeah. Day and, and Consulting Services Now, um, in Marlboro. It's a home-based social model day program for folks with earlier to mid-stage Alzheimer's. And I'm very involved in the Alzheimer's Association. It's, and, and talk about that. Sure. There's actually in Massachusetts, there's a Massachusetts, New Hampshire chapter. Mm -hmm. And there's a Watertown office and there's a Worcester office. Mm -hmm. There's a 24-hour helpline they provide. All their services are for free. Mm -hmm. um, they do a lot of fundraising efforts. All the money that they um, get is put forth towards supporting, educating, funding research um, for Alzheimer's and most importantly other dementia and that's important to know. And can you, can you just talk about to give us a sense of what the seriousness of Alzheimer's is I know that one of the reasons why we we're doing these shows uh, is I really came to realize that so many of the clients that I have who talk about doing planning for their own lives and asset protection and various other things they're, they're talking about general issues, but they're really talking about Alzheimer's and other diseases that could cause dementia. So do they have something to worry about? Is there some, a substantial chance that they could actually get Alzheimer's in their later years? If folks were watching the news last night, the yeah. Alzheimer's Association actually just came out with 2013 facts and figures. Mm -hmm. You can get those on their website. Mm -hmm. Um, over 5.4 million people with Alzheimer's. Uh, one this in is national. This is nationally. One in three seniors will um, expire with Alzheimer's or other dementia. That's mm -hmm. staggering. Um, one out of nine folks over the age of 65 have Alzheimer's or other dementia. And by the way, can we just talk about that for a second? Because we often hear or I often hear people using those two words interchangeably, dementia and Alzheimer's. Can we just talk about that? So d dementia, let me see if I'm getting this right, dementia is basically a, a, a word that describes certain symptoms. Correct. Certain ways that people act. Correct. Alzheimer's is one of the diseases which can cause one or more of these aspects of dementia. Am I, am I, am I getting Alzheimer's that right? Alzheimer's is the most prevalent type 
of dementia. Mm -hmm. There are probably 12 to 15 different types of dementia, but mm -hmm. Alzheimer's is the most prevalent. And there's early onset that can affect folks in their 30s, 40s, 50s, mm -hmm. and there's later onset 60s, 70s, 80s. I see. I see. And, and your numbers were suggesting that it, as you get older, the chances of you getting Alzheimer's is really, really... One, there's, there's a 50% chance over the age of 85. There's a 50% chance of your ending up with Alzheimer's. Or dementia. I see. And, and do those statistics talk at all about typically how long people end up having Alzheimer's? Alzheimer's it, can span anywhere up to, it's been noted up to about 20 years. Oh. Um, but it depends yeah. upon the onset. What I've seen in my experience, the yeah. earlier the person gets it, the, the quicker it progresses. Um, and we've talked in the past the importance of socialization and things like that and how we can slow the progression down. Um, but usually by 20 years, you that, know, yes, that's the that's max, about, that's yes. the high end. Yes. And is, is, it, is Alzheimer's... Or, or, or any of these forms, things that, that lead to dementia, reversible? Alzheimer's and dementia is not reversible. There are things that look like dementia, can mimic dementia, that are treatable and curable, yeah. and that's where we came in with the importance of getting a physician involved and on board to run a, a, a test to find out exactly what's going on. Now, now go back to the Alzheimer's Association for a few minutes. Now you talked about a 24-hour hotline that 24 they have. 24-hour helpline is a national helpline. All clinicians answer the phone, trained clinicians to help people in crisis. It can be as simple as, I just need to know this, or my loved one is having an episode of he thinks he's going to work at three o'clock in the morning and I yeah. can't change his mind, what do I do? Um, the helpline number is a 1-800 number, 1-800-272-3900. 1-800-272-3900. Correct. And literally that's a 24-hour number? 24-hour helpline. See, I had, I, until I, actually these shows, I was unaware of the existence of that. That's such an important. It's staffed 24/7. That's such an important feature because I think for 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 folks who have who are worried about all, Alzheimer's, but especially for family and for friends, for people who are taking care of them, caregivers who, who get oh. stuck with this kind of emergency situation, they just have no idea. In Massachusetts alone, there are 325,000 caregivers taking care of someone with Alzheimer's or dementia. Um, they're, they estimate 370 million hours of unpaid care. So these right. folks are choosing to care for their loved one, not get paid you know, by going to work. Um, right. It's a tough job. And of course we know that's everybody's goal. Everybody's, well it's not everybody's goal to be caring for someone with dementia, but it is certainly everybody's goal, whether they have dementia or not, to stay at home. Um, and not end up in a nursing home and not end up in a hospital. So right. all of those people that are helping are really helping to make somebody's wish or dream come true to allow them to stay home. Staying home is important. Um, there's 103,000 uh, folks in nursing homes in Massachusetts. Over 40% of them have my, uh, moderate to severe dementia. So we're doing a good job at keeping people home, actually. There's how many people in nursing homes? 103,000, over 103,000. Wow, that's a lot of folks. So I know that, because you told me, that the, the Alzheimer's Association has a conference coming up or a something coming up, and it's open to the public. And can you talk about that a little bit? There's several things. What, what we're, I'm part of, it's called the Metro West Alzheimer's Partnership. There's several partnerships, depending on the location you live in, that you can get involved with. The Metro West Alzheimer's Partnership is putting together a spring conference mm -hmm. with Dr. Robert Stern on April 27th. It's a Saturday mm -hmm. at the Heritage Assisted Living in Framingham. Mm -hmm. And um, it's encouraging people to go and learn more about the disease process. It is a free program. And can you tell me, what, what is, is he located right around here? He's an expert coming out of Boston, yeah. um, knows his stuff. And I hear he's a wonderful speaker. So the, the, the most important thing in the, the Alzheimer's Association has a ton of educational programs mm -hmm. that you can get informed about from their website. 
Now, is there a number that people need to call in order to sign up for this? Is there a website that people need to use to sign up? Um, actually, it will be listed on the website. Yeah. And um, if they want more information, yeah. um, they can always contact me because yeah. I'm a contact for the Alzheimer's Partnership. Okay. We'll be putting out flyers and such, so yep. if they have more questions, they can definitely. Do you have a number? 508-481-0809. Um, and you can call, leave a message that you want more information on the event. So I wanted to use the first part of today's show to be focusing on some of these Alzheimer's issues, but also to be introducing you to the Alzheimer's Association. It's a very important resource. It's free. It's funded through fundraising. If you want to donate, certainly you can, but it is free. Um, and they're the lead for, for in, in terms of trying to encourage research, but they're also the lead in terms of trying to help you with emergency or crisis situations. In the next part of the show, we're going to be talking about some legal issues that you probably want to be dealing with early on in your life to, to, so that you, make sure you know that things, certain things are in place if this curse ends up happening to you. Thanks, we'll see you in a few minutes.